Good morning, people, and welcome in for another vlog of myself, Darren. I do upload vlogs Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. If you are new to the channel, why not stick around and find out some more? What we're doing today in life for a truck driver. I've been sorting out my route. I've got quite a few drops today, a little bit more than usual. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different drops today. First one is in Accrington, and then Burnley, Haywood, Tildesley, Pimbo, and then Wigan. Look about one hour's drive to the first one with 39 minutes. Before we go anywhere, we've got to sort the trailer out, hooking it up, just gone underneath it, so we need to connect the airlines and sort the rest of it out. First things first, connecting the clip. Let's give that a little pull as well. Let's not forget about the reg plate. Whilst we're at the back, always make sure the back of the doors are all secured, there's no issues with them, and it's not gonna fall off whilst you're driving around. Same for the tread on the truck, make sure it's all good. One millimeter over three quarters of the tire, remember that. It's weird, isn't it? It's actually less tread legally for a truck than what it is for a car. Make sure the curtains are all okay, make sure these straps are all good. There's no damage on these, same for the sideboards. Connecting these lines, just like so. Wind the legs up, and then finally, push this little fella in for the brakes. Now the trailer's been checked and there's no issues. Let's get it open, check the load inside, make sure everything's all strapped down correctly and safely. Now the load is secured, tie the curtain down, and let's get out of there. Another wet, dull day. Jumping onto the M6, going northbound straight up until we come to the M65 and then on the M65 just follow that straight down then to come to Accrington and Burnley's just off the M65 as well I can't wait for these bloody roadworks to finish on the M6 near Haydock area it's just non-stop it's been like this for bloody years it doesn't seem like they're getting anywhere either so we're making them all into smart motorways, but I believe the smart motorway scheme has been scrapped, hasn't it? Because it's not as safe as what they hoped it would have been. And personally, I can't stand smart motorways. I think they're dangerous. They really are. It's just, if somebody breaks down in slow lane, it's, it's a live lane, isn't it, all the time? And so many accidents happen, especially at night time and stuff as well, where the car just gets abandoned in a live lane because you don't have a hard shoulder to swing off onto and then you get people doing like 35 miles an hour instead of 50 oh, headache anyway enough with the gloom and crappy stuff <laughs> um, last night finished for I think it was around 7 o'clock last night off the top of my head started yesterday at half past 6 so I was done a 12 hour shift done Today is a six o'clock start. Probably gonna be finishing around five or six. So it's another at least 11 hour shift today. Which I don't real mind to be honest. I think 12 hours is quite a good, a good number. If you're starting early, for example, six o'clock and you finish at six o'clock, it's, it's not too bad, is it? You can still do what you need to do in the evening. You've got a couple of hours to yourself before you need to get your head down. Which is fair as well, I only have about six to seven hours sleep as well I should probably start having a little bit more sleep around eight hours as I say you need but each to their own I suppose finding time <laughs> I like to just sleep when when it's needed instead of uh, like trying to guarantee myself eight hours so if I'm sat up watching a TV or something or something on Netflix and then sleep gets pushed back that extra hour, doesn't it? I've all the different start times I've had this week as well. Sleep's been all over the place, to be fair. It was uh, Monday, four o'clock in the morning start, so I was up at three. Tuesday was a five start, so I was up at four. Yesterday was six, and today's six, so five o'clock get ups. I normally get about, get up about an hour or so before I start work. It only takes me 15 minutes to get in, so that's quite good. 
It's always handy, isn't it, when you live right local to where you work. Especially if you're doing like a 14 hour shift or something. You don't be driving an extra hour home, do you? Just more driving with your own personal car that way, aren't you? You're still getting a little bit tired. Busy. They are normally okay going up north on the M6, especially going up Scotland. But yeah, as soon as you get past Blackpool area, you're just free flowing, aren't you? Straight up to Scotland, no problems whatsoever. I probably am expecting a little bit of traffic around Preston, probably Blackpool area as well. Well, and that we should be okay today. Checks on Google Maps as well for the first drive that we're going to. It looks quite a big business yard, so we shouldn't have anything too tricky to get in and out, hopefully. Oh, and some loading bays. A lot of places though, they do normally keep it quite clear, but if you get the odd place, where outside the loading bay you need to get on, they'll store all the empty pallets. But because they're not really a truck driver, they don't have that mentality to think how much space you need to reverse onto a bay. They do make it a little bit tighter. <laughs> tighter, a little bit tighter than it's uh, preferred, anyhow. arrived now at my first drop and I don't take deliveries for another hour. <laughs> half past nine for deliveries is a really weird time that isn't it? So it's half past eight in the moment. I rang up the office, double checked it was okay. Skip this, go to my next one because it's only 10 minutes down the road on the sat nav as well. And by the time we finish unloading there, come back, hopefully they'll just about umpen. Fingers crossed anyway for that. That's the plan in there. That's the plan of action we're going to take. So on to my next one, which is in Burnley, 10 minutes up the road, and that's three pallets to get took off for that one. Pretty glad I'm coming off at this junction and like going straight down. Wow, traffic has been really awful this morning on the M65. It took me about an hour and 20 minutes to get up to my first job at Warrington. Probably only normally take you about, what, 50 minutes, if that. So I'm just on the business park on the left hand side up here. Quite a few big units. I think this is going to be a backdoor job as well on the loading bay. Just hoping they can navigate around the two pallets what I run at the moment. Nice view that actually, isn't it? Whereabouts is actually I've never been to this place before. Um, should be just around here somewhere, I think. Oh, I've got a car right behind me. Never good when you got a car right behind you, is then you try and find somewhere. <laughs> so 
I don't want to turn down the wrong section that I can't turn around on. So I need to pull over in a second when it's nice and straight so the car can get past. Ah, I found it, it's all right. We're good, we're good, we got it. Looks like this place is the same as well. A little bit of a queue to get in. At least it beats waiting around for an hour, eh? up in Haywood at the moment for job number three. I think it's a couple of miles down here. It's been a while since I've been down this bit and I didn't know all this road works was going on. Made a right mess of it, haven't they? Um, got a weight limit up ahead, half a mile. And my job's half a mile. <laughs> I believe I'm on the right side of the bridge anyway because there is like a little low bridge or oh, it might be a whip where the bridge is anyhow and there's a industry estate on this side of it I think I've been up this way once before and I was on the other side because I followed the sat nav and I got stuck so I'm having a guess this time round I'm just coming straight to this bit hoping that I'm going to be on the right side Unless they've actually changed it, because I've seen that sign, it's got tape on it which says the the width limit. The last time I came up here, this was quite tight as well, this turn. Got fencing all over the sides of the road, just need to be careful with them. Let's take it wide to make sure the trailer doesn't cut the corner. Broadfield Business Park I'm looking for. And that is the weight limit up ahead that I was worried about being on the other side of. Ah, jobs are good enough. Three down and three to go. And it's only half past ten as well, so we're making really good time at the moment. Job number four is in Tildesley, 16 miles away and about a half hour drive. Well, so on the way though, we need to get a little bit of fuel first. Well, that's quite a rare sight there now. Where it does it on its own with the clip, you can just pull it up, flick the little switch here so it stays in position. Otherwise, it just wrecks your hand off because the spring on these are really, really tight. Ooh, 200 litres. I'm at Birch Services at the moment, and I don't think I've ever seen it this busy. Honestly, it is absolutely rammed. You can't park up anywhere. Everybody's parked to down the middle sections. Feels like I'm getting it at 6 o'clock at night, never mind 11 o'clock in the daytime. D for drivers are celebrating 10 years in the business and they are offering one customer a chance to win £500. Simply book your medical in the month of September using the code WINNER48. The winner will be announced on the 1st of October. Links are down below. Follow them on YouTube for more T's and C's. About a mile off uh, fourth drop. About five minutes or so to get there. And just going through Tildesley at the moment. Always gets backed up around here. So always really, really busy. Um, 
Just got a learner driver there. Hopefully he's not on his test. And if he is, good luck. There's a tight turn on to get around where he is now. You can see here as well, everybody just... There's cars everywhere, isn't there? Luckily, they're all in parts in the actual spaces and not hanging over too much are double parts, which you do get a lot of people double parking around here on the double yellows, which can be a bit of a pain. I've done a few deliveries to this street here on the right hand side. Absolute nightmare to try and get out here. You've literally got to come right across to the opposite side of the road, take up a little bit of pavement, be careful of the bollards, and then give it a nice tight swing round. And which way are we going up here? So straight through. And we should be following it around to the right. Tells the old roads on the right hand side as well coming on and that's where we are. Let's try and find somewhere for brake as well as soon as I've done this drop. Hopefully on the industry estate there might be something on there we can park up on the side. Need a minimum of 15 minutes because it's got to be the working time directive brake for this one. Well, I think if I can, I'm going to try and take the full 45, just so it clears both driving time and the working time directives. sleep for an hour if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> Good thing about doing class one driving you always get a nice comfy bed in the back. And yeah I thought it was this place down here. on the way out. Tuck in behind the van. Right, two pallets at this place. In and out hopefully. Absolute chaos around here. So I couldn't reverse into the delivery yard because somebody's parked right on the corner. So whatever you do, don't be like this bloody truck driver. I know a van when I'm about to start reversing. Let's pull it right behind me. Well, a bloody other truck driver's parked there now. What is going on here at all? This is absolute chaos. I don't know if you can see in the corner now, there. Give me a second mate, let me get to my Yeah, no worries, nice one. Looks like everyone has started parking on the bloody back of me.
Right, luckily the guy's going to help me out here, trying to stop the road a little bit. Right, I don't know where he is. So, if you're a banksman somebody, always make sure you can see the driver's mirror. If you can't see the driver's mirror, the driver can't see you. Yeah, it's bloody tight on this. By the gate itself, you put about a foot and a half, two foot on either side of the truck. You've got to like do a jackknife turn. Just see it properly. Nice one, mate. Well on Perfect. Next time I'll take a picture of Paul's gaffer. Yeah, because the park, like you say, spots the old street, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's it, mate. See you in a bit. My word, that was a little bit of a farce, wasn't it? Oh, messing about then. <laughs> Every time I tried to get out of the place, there was another van or another car or another truck that just parked behind me. Absolute headache to try and get out of there. I've done a bit of that place a few times, though, with um, my previous company. And normally, you just get in and out quite nice and easy. Just go up reverse into it pretty tight reverse but it's not too far plenty of space on the road but when there's not a truck parked opposite the gate with that all being said let's have some dinner nothing fancy for today bit of a chicken super noodles got my kettle on a go cooking away nicely no heat on that whatsoever so that's not going to cause any damage or anything that's just a metal case in there it's perfectly fine gets hotter itself that's hotter than that bloody hell Make yourself another brute. These things are bloody great as well. It's all like a quid. You can probably get about 10 coffees out of it. Just add hot water, it's got my coffee, milk, and sugar all in one. Flying through these jobs today, aren't we? So we've done three deliveries so far. I've just done a collection in uh, Worsley, and now we've got two drops left over in Wigan. Um, I'm not too sure whereabouts they are. I think one's in Pimbo, one's in the Wigan area. <laughs> I don't really know which bit. So the Wigan one is um, WN4, so it's quite close around. And the Pimbo one is actually on Skem. To get to Skem from where we are now is 22 miles and it's about 40 minute drive or so. Finally at our last destination. Got in, been outside for about, probably about an hour or something. Trying to kill the time watching a bit of NASA's announcement about bloody aliens and stuff. God knows what's going on, they weren't really that clear to be fair. I thought if you watched it yourself, but aliens, eh? Um, drop, dropping three pallets off here at this place and then collecting 13 to take back to our yard. Well, that was a nice tight one to get inside this yard, off that main road. Just bollards, trucks everywhere. Because they can only load from one side, we've got a pump truck, I've got to move them across. Each pallet weighs a ton. Generally, it's like a ton or 1200. Just speaking to the FLT guy then, though, and he was telling me what they do at this place is all the fillings for like jam donuts, your custard donuts, your, the jam on the jammy Dodgers, uh, Mr. Kipling's, and all that. Lot. So it's pretty cool, like, but check these out. So that's what they look like like a giant keg, and they weigh about 1100 full of jam and donut fillings. Safe to say, they need a good ratchet strap down. Made it back to the yard in one piece. Uh, a little bit of a queue to get unloaded at that moment. So there's two trucks in front of me. Well, two getting unloaded. So whichever one finishes getting unloaded first, I'll be able to jump into their spot to get unloaded. Probably about another 40 minutes or so before I finish. But I'm going to finish the video for now. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.